Hi guys, this is Andrew from M-Wave and I have Jaya here with us, our senior technician. Today we are going to do our Core i9 build, right? Yep. So let's, uh, let's talk about the parts that um, Jaya selected for, for the build. Let's talk about the CPU first. So which CPU did you pick in particular? So this is a 7900X, this is a 10 core CPU. Yep. It's uh, one of our two flagship processors from the uh, X29 series from Intel. Okay. And um, obviously you had to pick a compatible motherboard. So I'll just move this here. So can you talk, talk to us about the motherboard that you've, that you've chosen for the build? Yeah, definitely. So we went with the uh, Asus Prime X299A uh, motherboard. Um, it's a fully featured motherboard um, and it comes in the middle of the road in, in regards to all the uh, X299 motherboards out on the market. Yeah, okay. All right, sounds great. And I noticed um, you didn't pick a fan cooler for this, you, did, you picked a different CPU cooler, so what CPU cooler did you pick? Yeah, we uh, picked the Corsair H75, it uh, comes with 5 year warranty, um, it's tried and tested and uh, you know, we're using a high performance CPU so it needs high performance cooling. Okay, so talking about high performance, looks like there's plenty of, um, I would say storage? No. Oh no, RAM. This yeah. is RAM. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, so yeah, you want to talk to me about the RAM? Yeah, so so we have uh, 32 gigs of DDR4. Um, we've gone with uh, Corsair Vengeance LPX. Um, it, again, tried and tested, really good RAM. Uh, and 32 gigs for this kind of configuration, suitable for workstations, especially when you're dealing with uh, you know, large, large um, okay. projects and things like that. All right. And for the storage, we got this one, I believe. Yeah, so, so this, oh, this is a very awesome drive. So this is the uh, Intel 600P. Yeah. It's M.2 form factor, so yeah. it's really small, but it's blazing fast. It's the NVMe uh, M.2, yeah. and it's uh, one terabyte in storage. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's plenty. That's plenty. And then we also have a hard drive already installed. Yeah, so we have a Seagate Fire CUDA, wow. two terabyte. Okay, so I noticed this is not like your usual gaming graphic card. Now, why would, we, why would we use this for the workstation building? Why would Core i9 like? Yeah, so, so if your workflow benefits from using uh, Quadro drivers, then we would definitely recommend a Quadro uh, GPU, such as this, the P2000. It's based on the latest Pascal architecture. Yeah. Um, however, if your workflow could benefit from CUDA acceleration, you could also consider using a GeForce card, such as the GTX 1070 or 1080 Ti. Um, but for this particular workstation, we decided let's go with a Quadro. Okay. Uh, the system also accepts multiple graphics cards, so you can always upgrade it later. All right. So with, with the Quadro, you said it's good with um, some FPS, some rendering or something? Yeah, that's right. So if your workflow benefits from FP64 performance, uh, that's when you'll get the most performance gain out of a Quadro series card. Um, but if you're using CUDA acceleration, which is becoming increasingly more popular, CUDA or OpenCL, then we would say, look at the uh, GeForce line. Okay, and to power everything, we're using this beast, I guess. Yeah, it comes with 10 year warranty. Um, yeah. Tried and tested, just like all the, these components here. Mm -hmm. uh, fully modular, um, 750 watt is plenty for the system. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you wanted, you could go a little bit higher, but for this configuration, 750 is everything. Okay, sounds great. And the last thing, but not the least, um, what case are we actually using? Yeah, so uh, again, the theme, tried and tested. This is Fractal R5. Um, yeah. It is the uh, succe uh, successor of the ever popular Fractal R4, yeah. um, which means it comes with uh, sound deadening material, uh, fully uh, filtered intakes, mm -hmm. fan controller. Um, they've upgraded with more USB 3 ports at the front. Yeah. Um, it's just a very nice, robust, professional. Uh, chassis okay. to house all these components. So we have a really high-end workstation Core i9 PC. We also have a really silent case, so the computer is going to be really quiet in in the okay. office space and whatnot. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Okay. So let's uh, get into the build, um, how to build guide, and I'll see you guys shortly. So guys, we'll be installing the uh, 7900X, the new i9 CPU from Intel, into the Asus X299 Prime motherboard. Uh, so similar to the last video with the X99, how to build an X99 PC, it is the same retention plate and there will be the same steps and same method. So there is a gold indication on the CPU, um, it's a little golden triangle and there's also an etching 
on the, uh, the retention plate. And you're essentially lining that up for orientation. So it'll go in like this. And there's two levers that you have to release for it to swing open and swing up. And then you put the CPU in. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So this one is ready up. Uh, put some force down towards the motherboard's PCB, a little bit towards the rear I.O. And then it's up in a way. And then from there, lift the levers up. And then the retention plate is free. So these are the motherboard pins. So grab the i9, line the golden triangle up with the, uh, the retention bracket. Make sure you're looking directly over it. And there's also little notches that you need to line up. If you feel good about yourself and the world, it'll show in your painting and all these little things will have to happen. Okay, so you can make sure that it's in just by seeing that all the notches are in, it's seated in. Just do a visual check before you put this down. And then it's the reverse process. So the uh, right arm comes down first. This bracket will pop out of place. Lock it down, then left one down. Then you're done, that's the CPU installed into the motherboard. So you can put, keep this, put inside the motherboard box. Uh, the reason why you need to keep it is in case if the motherboard's faulty, uh, you can safely cover the motherboard socket so uh, it doesn't get damaged in transit. So you keep this. Um, next, we'll be installing the DDR4 RAM. We have 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM here. We'll do it in a quad channel configuration. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, uh, you can look up the motherboard's manual. So on the DDR4 module, it's asymmetrical um, and there's a little notch in the middle and uh, in the uh, slot itself, uh, you just have to line up the notch. And then you put even pressure on either end of the dim and then the little clip at the top of the motherboard will come into place. Okay, now we're going to install the Intel 600P. This is a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So you'll need a fine tip Phillips screwdriver for this. For this motherboard, the M.2 slot is just under this uh, thermal, wanna, thermal pad. So we have to remove these three okay, screws. Just to take your time and, and sit down, have nothing in mind when you start. Just have a good feeling and be happy and and love of life and the world and sit down and begin playing. And if you feel good about yourself and the world, it'll show in your painting and all these little things will happen after that. Okay, so inside the motherboard box, there'll be a very, very uh, tiny screw. It'll be the same gauge as this screw, but a lot shorter. And that's to secure the end of the M.2 in the slot. So we'll just have to step away for a moment just to grab that. Okay guys, so we went to the motherboard box to find the screw that we need to install the one terabyte NVMe drive. So it comes with uh, this little standoff. So we'll install that first.
So there are three nut locations depending on how long your end two is. Uh, and the length will uh, kind of reciprocate to this, uh, the key size or you know, how much NAND flash is on the drive. So just put the standoff for this build onto the third most um, location. Okay. And then similar to the RAM, the M.2 is notched. So just line the notch up. So this is the M.2 slot here. On the uh, X299 motherboards, there could be two or three M.2 slots, depending on the board that you use. So that's the M.2 installed into the motherboard. Uh, this particular motherboard has a heat spreader. Um, we had to peel off this protective uh, layer. So that's a thermal pad just there. And then this would therefore be a heat sink. Being creative on canvas, just to take your time and sit down, have nothing in mind. So just line it up so that the thermal pad touches the M.2. And love of life in the world. Sit down and begin playing. And also line up the screw holes. And then we're going to take the three screws that we removed earlier and install it back to the board. Just quick tip, uh, just try to uh, get them in lightly first. Don't tighten them all the way until you get all three screws in. It just helps you line it up. There we go. So that's the M.2 installed, the RAM installed, and the CPU. We'll move on to the next stage where we get the case ready and install the power supply into the case. So the next part is getting the case ready. Uh, to do so, we'll be installing the uh, IO back shield, uh, the power supply, the 2 terabyte fire cooter, and an optical drive as well. So to start, we'll remove the side panels from the case. So we're working with the uh, Define R5. So put the uh, side panels into the case box and separate it with the, uh, the foam that comes inside it so the uh, side panels don't scratch against each other. Okay, so once that's done, grab the motherboard IO shield and uh, see the circles with the square? That's where your sound ports will go. Uh, you want that close to the bottom of the case. So it goes at the back of the case. So where that rear fan's installed, there's like a little rectangular cutout. And you just pop it in to that slot. So you put pressure on each of the four corners and then it clicks in just like that. Yeah. Inside one of the hard drive slots is, is where you'll find the uh, case accessories. This will include all the uh, screws. So put that aside, you'll need that. You push the uh, cables through. So now we want to install the power supply in this lower section of the case. So 
This is a fully modular power supply, so it'll come in two pieces. So the first piece is the actual power supply unit itself, and the next piece are the cables that you'll need. They're, they're all fully labelled. So we'll install it just in the rear section here. There are four holes here, and the power supply inside the packaging comes with four screws. So we're just going to install that into there to secure the power supply to the case. You can just use a normal Phillips head for that. Uh, again, don't tighten the first screw all the way, it will help you line up the other holes. So I would say, you know, maybe four twists. Once you have all the screws in, then you can proceed to uh, tighten them. Touch tight is fine. You don't have to over tighten it too much. Okay. So, as the power supply is securely mounted to the, the chassis, you would want to run these cables down through this cable management grommet. So you'll be able to see it come through. You could do it all as a bunch, but then you increase the likelihood of moving the grommet away from the case itself. And you might have to reposition the grommet. But yeah, personal preference. It's an easy fix if it comes out. Okay. So that's just some basic cable management there. Remove any twist ties you see, so uh, both the fans, the cables will be held back by twist ties, just to keep them neat and transit. Okay, so... We will install the DVD drive or the optical bay first. So as this is a workstation, we do include an optical bay because you might have legacy hardware or archived files that you would like to install and you need a, need a DVD drive for that. You could always opt to not have one. We do sell USB external drives. So at the front, there's just um, a little clicker, you just pull it towards you and it lifts away. Keep this inside your motherboard box. So that slot is where the DVD drive goes. So just looking at the slot, just put the rear in into the case. And you're just trying to line it up so it's flush. Okay, so you guys will be able to see it on this side. So there are holes here, screw holes. So you want to get uh, M3 screws or optical base screws in that, in this thing here. And here we go. It's labeled on the back for this case. So what do they call it? They call it optical drive screw. So you want to find optical drive screw and screw into here. Also, make sure you watch the front so it's lined up evenly with the case.
Try to keep one baggy, so when you're done with the screws, you can put them somewhere. So to mount the DVD drive, you'll need four screws in total. I'll start with the side closest to me. Uh, so on each side of the DVD drive, there are four uh, pilot holes. You only need to populate the top two. Because you'll be doing four in total, two on each side. So that's the DVD drive secured. And as you can see, the DVD drive is here, hidden behind this door. Okay, so the next step, we're going to install our uh, storage or archive drive. So this case has a lot of drive expansion. We'll start from the bottom one and as you need more storage, you can always populate it. That's the great thing about having a custom PC. It's modular, easy to upgrade. So, you get the sled out, you pinch it evenly on either side, these two tongs, and slide it, forge it, and it comes out. So for this part, you can just work with this hard drive in the sled. So remember the orientation, it comes out this way, we want the cables to come out the rear. So this is the SATA power and the SATA data, so we want it to be on this side. So we can run the cables at the back of the case, not the front. It's not that you can't do it, it's just it looks a lot neater when you do it this way. Okay. So the mounting for this particular hard drive sled will be all at the bottom. So on the box, they call these screws three and a half inch drive screw and dampener, and you have 32 of them. So it's just this one here. So these are the dampeners, and these are the three and a half inch drive screws. So you will get your dampener. So you need four in total. There's four holes here. So you can use this process for any of the three and a half inch drives. So you need four per drive. So we only need four for this. Then on the side, there are these holes. So you just put them through. There's like this little slot. Try to line these up, see if they line up. Cool. And we'll need four of the three and a half inch screws. Okay. And then using a Phillips head, just put one in, couple turns, do the 
the opposite side. Couple turns. Then rinse and repeat for the remaining. Looks like I got an extra one. Okay, now just touch dried. Okay, so that's how you connect your hard drive to the hard drive sled. Once it's in this form, it's uh, more or less toolless. You just need to unplug the set of data and set of power each time. So, you just want to install your drive. So, the repeat process is, if you want to replace this drive, you will disconnect the cables at the back, hold down these two tongs, and you can slide it out. You would use this process for any other drive that you install. If you're transiting the computer, which uh, we will eventually, you will also use another screw on the side to hold this, um, hold this hard drive in. But because we're going to test it first, we're not going to mount it to the hard drive cage. So I'm not sure that the hard drive is fully validated yet. Okay guys, we're going to install the motherboard into the case. Uh, to do so, we need to get the case ready by installing these motherboard standoffs. So uh, these motherboard standoffs go inside the case um, and it'll go at these locations. So these bottom three, these mid three, but this one and this one's ready installed. And these top three. And that one's ready installed. Okay. So just turn it to the right, righty tidy. Should be installing eight of these motherboard standoffs into the case. And like with everything, touch tight is fine. At home, it would be easier for you to lie the case down, but I just want to show as much as I can the process of doing this. But if I was doing this off camera, I would have the case lying down and I'll be looking directly down at it. So it's just the last one here. If access is hard, you can use a screwdriver. Just like that. Okay. So, we have now the uh, motherboard standoffs in. We're going to remove this rear fan because we'll be installing our own aftermarket CPU cooler. And that's where it mounts. So there's four screws. There are four screws. So grab a Phillips head, turn to the left. You might have to put a bit of pressure against the fan as well to get the screw out. Okay, so you can reuse this case fan. Uh, you know, you could install it at the top, 
or at the front. But because we want to optimize this one for sound and also uh, reduce the, uh, the dust, so we want basically positive airflow, uh, we won't be actually reinstalling this case fan. We'll be replacing it with our aftermarket cooler. So the, removing this fan gives you more room, more working room. So we're gonna lie it down now to install the motherboard. So we're about to install the x motherboard into the case. Uh, to be able to do this, I'll have to install the first two screws off camera. Then I'll tilt the case up and you can see the rest of the process. But I will uh, verbally describe what, what it is I'm actually doing. So you can pick up the motherboard by uh, holding onto this plastic and one of the dims and the edges of the PCB. You need to look down directly into the motherboard tray. Uh, uh, realign the motherboard to be in a vertical position. Uh, you want to tilt the motherboard and try to line up the rear I.O. to the rear of the case, to that I.O. shield that you have. So you, you want to lower down towards the rear I.O. using the plastic uh, you know, fancy thing on the Asus board to help guide it in. Lower the motherboard down and line it up with that center motherboard stand. Okay, once that's in, there are screws that are labeled inside that accessory box, same motherboard screw. Grab eight of those. Just start with the edge, center edge. Just touch tight. Okay, the motherboard should be secure enough now for me to lift it up so you can see it in full frame. So, you'll repeat this process with the remaining five screw holes. So, you start at the edge. Take your time, make sure not to scratch the PCB with your metal tool. And ideally, if you're doing it at home, have it down in the starting orientation so you can look down directly at it. You'll find it much easier. Remember not to over tighten. Okay, so that's the motherboard secured into the case. The next thing we'll do is install our aftermarket CPU cooler. So, in the H75, you need to find uh, these four uh, threads. They're the same as the X99 mounting system. So you get the fatter end, and install it into these four points, like so. Again, this would be easy if you're looking directly down into it. You also had this opportunity to do it uh, outside of the case. Okay, so that is the first step to install 
the aftermarket CPU cooler. The next step is the next step. Remember how we got rid of we got rid, rid of this fan? The reason is we're replacing it with high static pressure uh, Corsair SB120 fans. So that's what the CPU cooler looks like. Event, essentially, what will happen is you'll mount it with the fans, one against the case, the radiator here, one on the other side, and then the CPU block down like that. So we'll start by securing the fans and the radiator to the case. So make sure you leave this on. The reason is it has uh, thermal paste. If you remove that cover, it could go everywhere. Okay, so you'll need to find these long screws with the washers. You use them to secure the fans to the radiator. So there's four per fan, so you'll need eight in total. You get a washer and you just thread it through the screw, just like that. Rinse and repeat eight times. Yes, I will. We'll do. So for the best thermal performance, we want to be exhausting the hot air that's generated by the hardware outside of the case. So from internal, outside. So since the top's sealed and the front's intake, outside is the rear. So we want air to push through here and out. On these fans, there is uh, two little arrow marks to indicate uh, where the fan, uh, which way the fan spins and which way the airflow goes. If you can't remember that or you can't find that, there, there is a frame on the fan and generally airflow will go towards the frame. So that's the blade, that's the frame, air will go towards the frame. So if we want to exhaust the hot air, we want to sit the frame up against the rear of the case. Uh, the, uh, the fan cable will come out of one side of the fan we want to position this so that this side is towards the rear of the case. It will help with cable management. And if we're super smart, we'll also position it so it's closer to the top corner. So just like that. Like that. So we'll get the end of the fan cable, we'll run it through the top corner from it. We'll do this process now. You can use that as a guide. You grab one of the screws that you prepared earlier. There are there are slots. There are slots at the rear of the case. So you have to line it up with the two inner ones. The outer ones are for larger size fans or radiators. You want the fan frame touching the radiator, so it pushes the air through the rad. So you just use your finger to tighten four of it, just to get it into the hole.
use a screwdriver to tighten. Again, make sure it's just touch tight, otherwise you'll start to twist the fan, uh, the fan housing. Tighten it too much, the fan will start scrubbing itself. That's one fan, and you can see that'll be pushing air through. You want to run this cable to the top fan now. You want to line up. The rear fan and the radiator. You just want to repeat the process for the remaining two screws. Uh, just remember when you are doing this that you don't tighten the screws all the way, otherwise it will be next to impossible to line all four up. Well, on camera you can see that the radiator has like a lot of wiggle room. Nothing's that tight yet. And once you have the four in, just secure them a little bit more. You don't have to do it all the way yet. Reason is, if you just have it slight, you can move it around. This will help us get access into the CP fan header at the top. Also make sure not to uh, over tighten the radio specifically because um, the, the pilot holes can shear. Okay, so that's the radiator, the main bulk of the weight of the cooler attached to the case. So we will want to, we will run the, uh, the CPU fan cable first. If you're unsure about its location, please consult your motherboard's manual. Right. Run the excess cable through the grommet at the top. Okay, so we have all the cables that we need to power the fans at the back of the system. We should have enough room to access the eight pins later. So we'll proceed to mount the CPU um, cooler 
of the uh, CPU blockhead and pump combo onto the CPU itself. So we'll need these little thumb screws. They'll fasten down on top of this. You just need to line up the retention, the CPU retention plate. So this is the cable that powers the pump inside the all-in-one cooler. Uh, you should tie plug this to a water pump header if there is one, or if not, uh, whatever header that you do plug it into, take note of, because you want to run it at full speed if possible. So again, this would be uh, considerably easier if you uh, put the case down onto the table and you're looking down directly onto the, the, um, the CPU and the motherboard. So touch tight on one side. It is very important for this one that you do um, opposite corners. So let's say how you would install like your spare tire. Because it will burn. You want it to apply evenly. So make sure not to turn it all the way down again, otherwise it will be next to impossible to secure all four thumb screws. Once you have them all on about halfway, use a screwdriver. I'll get out of shot. And make sure you tighten up opposites. Just touch tight. You want to find the fan header. So on this X29 Prime Asus motherboard, there is an AIO pump header. It's also colored in white. So we will run the, ca uh, the cable, the pump header cable into it. Or the pump cable, sorry. Peel away the plastic. So that's just so you don't get fingerprints on the top of the CPU core. And yeah, that's installing the CPU cooler, the motherboard, into the case. Uh, we'll move on to the next step, which will be doing the cabling and installing the graphics card and uh, finishing up the build. Okay, so um, what we'll be doing now is connecting all the cabling. So to power the motherboard, we'll need to connect the power supply to the motherboard uh, via the 24 pin socket here and an 8 plus 4 at the top. Uh, we'll also need to power the DVD drive. So there's a SATA power here and there's also a uh, SATA power at the rear of the hard drive. We'll also need to be connecting the two SATA devices via the SATA ports here. 
And then the front panel down here and the front USB here. So what I'll start by doing is connecting SATA data cables into the SATA ports. I'll try to start with the top two SATA ports, but it really doesn't matter. So make sure that the metal clip is facing you. Again, all of this is easier if you lie the PC down and you're looking directly at it. Okay, so we have two SATA data cables plugged in for our two SATA devices, which is the DVD drive and the hard drive. Just run it through the uh, cable management grommet hole. Okay, just like that. Okay, so uh, while we're here, to uh, get the first uh, PCI Express slot ready, to accept the graphics card, we'll remove the PCI brackets from the rear of the case. Uh, we're using a Quadro P2000, which is a single slot graphics card, so we'll only need to re remove one of these. So although it's a thumb screw, you'll need a screwdriver to loosen it up. Then make sure you keep the thumb screw. Okay, so that's everything we can do on this end. We'll now need to flip to the back. Okay. So we'll start from the top and work our way down. So these are the CPU fan cables. We'll connect them. So this is the fan splitter that we connected to the motherboard. These are the two fan cables. We'll just plug it in together. There's a little tab. Only fits one way. Just you know, take your time, look at it, don't force anything. It should be all right. Cool. There are tie down points here. I will do that less, last. Okay, so our cable management velcros here, just loosen them for now. You can probably leave that one. So these are the SATA data cables that we plugged through before. We will use the right angled one for our DVD drive. So feed that one back through the top grommet hole. And around that velcro. And then this one will go to our hard drive at the bottom. So our hard drive's down here. The data is at the right. Power's on the left. Run the excess cable down. Okay, so we wanna pass through all these cables now so we can work with them on the other side. So let's start with the bulkiest. So 24 pin cable, this is what powers the motherboard and gives power also to anything connected to the motherboard. So it's around here somewhere, so we'll feed it through the top from it, like so. This is your 8 pin CPU power, most motherboards just need this. Um, but for X209, some of the motherboards require an additional four pin, which is half of the cable that I'm feeding through now. So in case if you're wondering, these are two places where you can mount two and a half inch drives. 
uh, more commonly like SSD drives. But you could get away with putting hard drives, but you probably wouldn't need to. So this is your second CPU cable. You only need one of the two. But just feed both of them. You can always feed the one that you don't use back. These are all the front panel connectors. So they also give you a, uh, a fan controller if you want to use it. But our motherboard can control the fans in the BIOS, so we'll just hook it directly to the board. So untangle some of the cables. So this is the USB 3 front panel connector. This will power the front USB 3 headers. So run this where the 24 pin cable is. So again, untangle this stuff. Basically, the neater that this is, the, uh, the less bulk and bulge you'll have. And also, if something's faulty, it'll just be easier to you know, work out what it is. So this is the front case then. We'll need to run this to the motherboard. So we'll use the second lot of grommets. Okay, so these are all your front panel cables. So they're labeled. So this one's HD audio. So that's if you want to plug headphones in or a microphone in to the front of the PC. This is a USB 2 header. And these are required for the power LED, power button and reset button to work. So all of these connect at the lower portion of the motherboard. So you would like to use the lowest um, grommet. Again, try to minimize the overlap if possible. You can always fix this up later. Okay, so plug in your SATA data, uh, SATA power, sorry, next to the SATA data for your hard drive. Then we'll flip it around. Okay, again, starting at the top. <coughs> we'll do the, uh, the A pin. Then the second part of the apron, which is an additional four.
So we will do SATA data for the DVD drive on the additional cable back. We can see that the USB 3 port is down here, so we'll pull this one back through. 24 pin up here. Feed the additional cable back. Okay, so we have the front panel cables down here. We'll start with the HD audio, so left to right. HD audio is down here, so that's the sound card. We can see here that there's a grommet, so we'll run this down in the grommet. Sorry, not grommet. We'll run it through the grommet to the cutout. There's a cutout down here, bam. Do the same with the USB. And then now we'll do the front panel. Oh, we'll do the fan first. Okay, so the front panel is labeled. Uh, if you're unsure, just consult the motherboard manual. Okay, so we just need one small SATA power to the top, which is somewhere. So say the power to your DVD drive.
what I did was just to hide it a little bit better. I just ran it not through the grommet, but just around the side of the hard drive rail. There we go. Okay. And now we'll do cable management at the back. So again, it'll be easy if you lay the case down. I can still do it like this. So we'll need this to plug into the power supply. If you have these, or they'll come with these cable ties, they'll come with the power supply. Shorter versions will, anyway. You can use these tie down, uh, tie down points. This is uh, an optional uh, step in the process of building the PC. It's not critical. Okay, actually to fix the cable management, I'll lie it down later. I'll finish plugging everything in. So remember, we, we ran the USB 3, just so it would be a shorter run. So on the USB 3 head, it has a little notch, and you just line it up with the notch on the motherboard. Now uh, to come through this grommet, it's going to be too tight. So we will run it similar to the SATA power that we just ran. We'll run it through this side. When I say too tight, it's not that you can't do it. It's just it will put strain onto the, the actual socket if you do it that way. Okay. What else? And remember we added another SATA power cable down here somewhere. There we go. So you want to plug that into the motherboard. Oh sorry, into the power supply. <laughs> and it's labeled SATA. So it's just at the front here. Okay. Let's re punch these up. Okay, so we'll install the graphics card now. So this is the new Quadro P2000 single slot graphics card. You could also um, consider using a GeForce card, like a gaming card, like a GTX 1070. 
Uh, if you use most of your workflow, you benefit from CUDA acceleration. But if you use FP64, or your workflow benefits from FP64 performance, or you specifically need um, Quadro compatible drivers, then we'll recommend using a Quadro. You can always run multiple graphics cards in systems like this as well. Okay, so that's everything plugged in. We'll do a time lapse for the cabling at the back, and that's about it. Okay, guys, now we're going to do uh, cable, final cable management at the back. Uh, just make it a little bit easier for us to add and remove components and just overall a little bit neater. And that'll be the end of the build. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get it done. So that is an i9, X209 workstation using a P2000. Again, you can replace it with a GeForce card, depending on your workflow. But this is our uh, M-Wave workstation. Okay, there you have it. JS completed the build and we have it right here in front of us. Right, so this actual build we have it on our website. So you can check the link below. And um, JR, if the customer wants to customize their own workstation, what, what should they do? Yeah, so we have a custom PC build tool, um, so you can go through there, or yeah. you can uh, request a quote and we'll help you uh, spec up a system suited to your use case or your workflow. Yeah. Um, so just send it through and one of my guys, one of my technicians will, yeah. will answer that email. Okay, sounds great. So we'll have that um, link, link below as well. So if you want to customize your own workstation type of PC, feel free to send us a quote or use our website configurator tool. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you like the video, give it a, give it a thumb up. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. See you guys next time.